thing. Heaven is always busy with praise and worship. Don't be a part-time Christian. It doesn't pay off. You know, I believe in my heart that the greatest things you could be walking with Christ is be mindful of who he is throughout the day. Stop sila, meditate of his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his love, his compassion. He's, he is due your attention. He is due that you stop throughout the day and shout a praise or give him a thank you for what he has done for you. You with me? I think that we go throughout the day and we miss it. And we just want to, just, we want to wait and say, well, we do it on Sunday. Sunday should be every day. Sunday should be every day. You get up, you know, you get up in the morning. It's not, it was in your iPhone they woke you up. There's people that went to bed last night and didn't get up this morning. Understand? You, you, need, you need to have a, the mind of Christ. To be mindful of the heavenly things that he has for you and for me. Regardless of your circumstance, your situation, what storm that you find yourself in. He is the God of the storm. You with me? And I think today, prophetically, we, we going into a storm, into, the, in, into our walk with the Lord. Because the things have to be shaken. And, and we, we want that soft, we want that, you know, that mellow Christianity. Lord, uh, you promised me that if I come serve you, nothing's going to happen to me. I don't know, but that, that sounds like new age to me. Even the witches can't promise you nothing. They don't, they don't even know about themselves. They don't know about you. Think about these things. I, I, want, I want you to understand in your life that the closer you get to the Lord, the thinner is the air you breathe. Amen? You can't go around saying, I bear the marks of Jesus if you didn't pay a price. You can't tell me that you have an alabaster box. What is the price of your box? There's a price to pay to walk with him. You have to suffer. And it's not the suffering of the world. It's suffering of growing in him. Understand? It's called growing pains. Because you see, there's this, in the Bible, in the book of Numbers, there was a church, the largest church in the world. It was in Joel's things, trust me. It was Moses' church. There was 30 million people in that church. And the saddest thing about that church, they had an amazing leader. But they grew old, but they never grew up. And we find ourselves in that Christian walk. Instead of being a tree... Bearing fruit, we become fig trees. Because there's nothing that we produce. That from far we look like Christians, but when God comes inspect, there's no fruit on your tree. So I, I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you today. Jesus and the storm. Who do you see in the storm? Do you see G do you see the storm? You see Jesus or you see the devil? Which there's three. Either the storm, Jesus, or the devil. Which one you see in your storm? Because if you see the storm and you focus on the storm, you miss Jesus. And if you blame the devil for everything, the devil is all, he ain't all that in a bag of chips. You can't blame him for everything. He ain't that, he's not that powerful. Even the devil got limits. Because every storm you go through, God has to sign off on it. I can prove it to you in the Bible. I'm going to talk to you to it in the Bible. That whatever storm you find yourself in, Jesus' Hancock signature is on it. You 
You remember Matthew 14, 22, and just to go through, the, through it real quick. Matthew, he fed the 5,000, sent them out. He restrained, he told, he restrained his temple, get on the boat, I'll catch you later. He, he, he told them, get on the boat, I'll catch you later. In other words, he knew he was sending them into a storm. He knew that he was sending them to have God had told you get on the boat and he sent you into a storm. Pop quiz, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, pop quiz? The teacher you hate the most. It's funny. We go to school. I mean, I ain't go all the way, but just a little bit I remember. We go to school and when we get an A, we say, I got an A. When the teacher give you an F, you say, oh, she gave me an F. No, no, baby, you got the F too. You, you take that home with you and you, you marinate on that one. It, it, is, it, is the, it is, he fed the 5,000, sent them away. He told the disciples, go on the boat. I'll see you later. And they got on the boat. And he intentionally, absolutely knew that they were going into a storm. It was like the Titanic, baby. He's put them in the Titanic. And he said, I'll send, go. I'll catch you later. They went into the, to, to this storm. And, and I think when we go to a storm, we, the, the first thing we say, where is Jesus? No matter what you're being tested, tried, proven, where is Jesus? And Jesus is giving you the pop quiz of your storm, of your situation, of your circumstance. Whatever circumstance you find, Jesus is giving you the pop quiz. He gave them the pop quiz. He sent them out on the storm. He sent them out. And they said, where is Jesus? And Jesus is up in the mountain praying for you, interceding for you that you don't fail. Jesus was up on the mountain praying, interceding. They said, Jesus, he sent to the right hand of the Father to intercede for you. Yeah. I mean, you can't get any greater intercessor than Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, you can get Julio to intercede for you. It ain't going to work. <laughs> but when Jesus intercedes for you, it's a done deal. Yeah. So he sent them out. And, and, the, and the crazy thing is, the crazy thing, he sent them out. And Jesus is up on the mountain praying for them with the Father. So they won't fail the test. It is amazing how Jesus is up there. And you worry about the midterms and the final, but you can't pass the pop quiz. Unprepared. And we come into a place, even Jesus told, told Peter, Satan had asked to miss you permission to sift you like wheat but I signed off on it I signed off on it I mean Jesus even gave him the answer I signed off on it so when you come out of it you straighten your brothers I mean it's, it's, it's amazing that you're talking to the master God knows the test that you're going through right now. Right now. He knows the test. He knows the end results of your situation right now. But we, 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 we can't, we, we're on the boat. We're too much busy staring at the storm. Or we're too much busy blaming the devil. And we're missing the one that can walk on water. You see, because, because they came to a place, they came to a place, the boat, they got, they got on the boat, they got on that trip, they got on that boat. And when they got on the boat, the waves in the sea of life has drifted you and shifted you out of the will of God. And now we, 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 either we get angry, we get bitter, we get upset, we get angry with God. How could you get angry with God? I mean, how could you get angry with the one that holds the answer? Delusion of delivers Christianity. 
You see, this is, this, is, this is what I'm taking you. I'm taking you into a situation that, you see, at this point, the disciples recognize him as the miracle worker. See, at this point, you recognize him as the miracle worker. You with me? You, I recognize him. I know him as the miracle worker. I know him as the miracle worker that he can take five, he can take two fish and five loaves and make miracle food out of it. I know him as the miracle worker. I know him as the, see, I recognize him as the friends of sinner because he sat with sinners. See, I know him. I know that aspect. I know that phase. I know, I know that part of Jesus. We, we, we come to a place that, yeah, I, I, I recognize that. You see, we know him as, as we know, you see, we know him as he has supplied all your needs according to the riches in heaven. I mean, we, don't, we know that he paid your taxes. I guess people here, I guess people, we don't go to discipleship. We don't have the discipleship class anymore, right? I mean, that's like old-fashioned. That's played out. That expired. He, he paid your taxes. He, he said, go, go, go to that fish and tell him, give me the coin. He paid, we know him as the God that paid the taxes. You with me? We know him, he, he, you know, he paid, we recognize him, we recognize him as, as, as the son of God. When Peter said, you are the son of God. And he said, don't get uppity, my father revealed that to you. Don't get, don't, 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 don't take this, don't take it as credit of your own. Because you, Peter, you're not that smart, you got off the little bus. <laughs> it was a revelation from heaven that hit you, Peter. See, they, they know him, they know him, they know they knew him as, as the man that the man they knew him, they knew him as he had the words of eternal life. Peter, when he said, You want to leave me too? And Peter said, Where will we go? You have the words of eternal life. See, they recognize him as that person. See, you you know, some of us are sitting here and we think we know him, we know of him. It's a big difference, baby. You, you, to know him. It is, like I said yesterday, is the Lord is your shepherd. Are you in relationship with him? Are you just dating? Jesus don't date part-time. You got Jesus confused with Julio. Jesus don't date. Jesus married people. I'm, I'm just, they knew him as the words of eternal life. They knew him and he, they knew him as he, they recognized, they knew him and he, he, he has power, all power over the enemy because he cast out devils. Jesus cast out devils and went to lunch. <laughs> Jesus cast out devils and he went to lunch afterwards. It, it, it's amazing how we miss the nuggets in the word of God. Jesus come up and he asked the man in Mark chapter 5, what is your name? And Jesus, sometimes he asks questions. You say, what would he ask that? It just, it, it's a test, baby. It's a test. He, he asked, what is your, your, your name? Jesus did two amazing things in the Bible that blew people away. Many others, but I'm just going to point two out. They blew people away. He, he, tell, he tell, first of all, Jesus stepped off the boat. Got catch this in the spirit. Wake up. He stepped off the boat. The atmosphere changed. The demons knew something came into the atmosphere that is not the norm. The man ran from the tombs because he felt the demons felt something in the atmosphere that shifted and took the authority and dominion over where we are. And when they step off, what they ran. To the location to see what was up. And who, who's stepping off the boat? I mean, Jesus is so off the hook. He stepped off the boat. He made the boat. He made the sand. He made the water. He stepped off of the things that he made, he made. And when he stepped off the boat, the demons, he, the demons said, listen, the, the demons went to Bible school. <laughs> they were theologians. They say, hey, you here before time. You can't beat us up. 
too early. It's too early for you to smack us down. Think about it. And then Peter, they got off with, Jesus got off with the little, the, the little you know, Twinkies. But what, what, what he said? What will happen? What's going on? And, and, and Jesus said, you need to catch this. Jesus said, what is your name? And I, I had deliverance ministers. That's why, man, you got to know the word. You got to know. I had deliverance ministers saying, they tell demon, hey, what's going on? How long you been there? How long you been there? What is your name? How you came in? Now, instead of listening to the Holy Spirit, now you're interviewing the demon. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you're losing time. The demon's going to take you into a rabbit trail. How long you been there? How did you come in? And if you're talking to the demon that way, then you're not listening to what the Holy Spirit has to say to you. Because now you're relying on the demon to tell you the truth. And then the demon will send Julio, because there might be a few of them in there. Julio, you go talk to him, and I'm the main one. I stay in here. You go make believe, let him cash you out, but I stay here because I'm the main one. So I stay here because I'm the strong man. Yeah. And he'll send the weak one. So the weak one get cast out. You thought the person got free, but the person never got free because you cast out the secondary demon. Because the first demon, the strong man, will stay in there and continue to torment. Yeah. So Jesus turned around and said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Legion. That wasn't his name. He was, telling, he was telling him his identity. My identity is Legion. We are many in this place. It, and, and then you hear people saying, what is your name? And then the demon said, my name is Legion. Come out, Legion, thinking that the demon name is Legion. If the demon says it's not Legion, the demon is telling you his position, his authority inside the man. That's what the demon is saying. I'm, I'm, I'm describing myself to you so you know what you're up against. That's what the demon is saying to Jesus because they were trying to intimidate him. They were saying, well, well you got 2,000 up in here, you by yourself because we know the other two, the two are punks. The other two are punks. So you, we know there's 2,000 in here. So you sure you want to you do this today? Now they're talking to the son of God. You sure you want to do this today? Because there's 2,000 in here and you by yourself. Because the other two, they ain't going to do nothing. And Jesus was proving to the world that he is all powerful. The way he can cast out one, he can cast out 2,000. And he cast out 2,000 devils and went to lunch. 2,000 devils and went to lunch. The same way... Jesus took the, he took the two fish and listen, I grew up in the projects. I know this stuff. It's part of the Bible. I know this stuff. You can't feed 20,000 people and they're going to be quiet. <laughs> Jesus used two fish and five loaves of bread to expand his ministry. He fed, historians said it was like 20,000 people he fed. Those 20,000 people went out and said, yo, we were hanging out with Jesus and we ate good. That was like, yo, the fish and the bread, man, it was just off the hook. I mean, they just went out and, I mean, they spread the gospel of the bread and the two fishes. They went all over the region and said, man, I was about to faint, but Jesus showed up. He, he cracked us two fish and no five loaves of bread. Man, we had a barbecue up in here. Man, we ate and there was 12 baskets left over. It's like gossip. You told your sister Wanda, Wanda to Julia. Julia go to this person. Before you know it, the whole neighborhood know about you. That's the gossip community. Don't be part of that. So, 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 uh, so this, they knew him that he can cast out demons. He can cast out one. He can cast out 2,000. They knew him that way. You with me? They knew that he was the teacher, rabbi, teach us how to pray. They knew him that way too. 
However, however, they get to learn and recognize him that he was the God of the storm. You might know Jesus in so many ways, but you don't know him that he's the God of the storm. He's the one that walked on water. He's the one that can say, peace, be still. He can say, peace, be still to any storm, to any devil, any sickness, any situation, any circumstance in your life. He's speaking to the atmosphere. He speak, when Jesus spoke to the atmosphere, he said, peace, be still. He wasn't talking to the waves of the sea. He was talking to the devils. There was an atmosphere that was creating the storm. They failed to recognize that he's the God of the storm. And at time we miss God's best because we felt, we felt to recognize that he can do it all. And many of us today, we failed the test because we trust Jesus, miracles, signs, and wonders, but we don't trust him in the storm. I, I hear people saying, oh, I'm sick. Oh, I pray for you. We gonna, Jesus is going to heal you. Well, I need a miracle. You know, I need a raise at work or I need a miracle. Oh, I pray for you. I need a miracle. I need an apartment. I pray for you. But no one prays and say, I'm going to trust the Lord of the storm. That he's, he's going to be on your boat as you ride through the storm. No, I haven't heard many Christians say, I pray for you because he's the God of the storm. He's going to bring you through because you see, if God, whatever God promised, he's big enough to fulfill it. Whatever God was signed off on, it, he's big enough to complete it. God is the God that completes everything completely and fully. There's nothing missing, nothing broken in him. He sits on the circle of the earth. I told people yesterday that in the, in the book of Isaiah, he, he holds the oceans in the palm of his hand. The oceans of the world. I told people that I, I, I heard my pastor Tim Delina said that he, 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 he measured the universe by the span of his hand from his pinky to his thumb. He, he measures the entire universe. You see these people, these PhD scientists, people, well, you know, today we discover a planet. And John Romero's got a high school diploma. And John Romero says, well, the stupid that planet was always there. <laughs> I don't need to have a PhD to let you know that. It might be new to you, but it's not new to God. <laughs> if you want to see the majesty of the awesomeness of who he is, Turn on Discovery Channel, Geographic Channel, and check out the oceans of the world and the fishes that are down there. That they, they, they can't send us a, a, a submarine down to a certain place because they, the, the pressure will crush it. The pressure will crush it. You with me? The pressure will crush. But you got the little fishy past the submarine all the way down to the bottom because there's something. There's a mechanism inside the fish. There's a mechanism inside the fish that God put it in that can hold the weight and the pressure of the ocean. And God puts something in you that you can hold the weight and the pressure. It's called the Holy Spirit. You can hold the weight of the pressure of any storm of your life that you can go through. Because there's a mechanism that God has put in us. Devil, you can't crush me. Because there's something in me. Paul said we will crush in every side. Ain't not like the Holy Spirit, baby. I've seen a lot of ghosts in my time. <laughs> I've seen, I seen Casper, <laughs> the friendly ghost. I've seen a lot of ghosts in my time for 25 years. Ain't nothing like the Holy Spirit. I don't even call him the Holy, I don't even call him the Holy Ghost. Because that's like if we call it me, my personal conviction, calling him the Holy Ghost is, a, is, is an insult for me. I call him the Holy Spirit. Ain't nothing like him. Ain't nothing like the Holy Spirit. When God gave you the Holy Spirit, man, he gave you everything. He gave you everything. When he said, I send you the comforter, he gave you everything. That means you don't need nothing else. You don't need no oil from TBN, you know, put the oil on you. It's straight from Israel and uh, it's going to anoint you and it's from Costco. You got Julio back there pumping it up. Pumping it up, pumping it up, pumping it up. Yeah, put the label on. Tell me it's from Israel. You don't need holy water. You know, we sell holy water here because, you know, it's, it's going to heal you. You know, it's miracle water. Oh, we got soap that if you shower with it, your sins will come off. 
you know, just send a thousand dollars. We'll send you two bars for a thousand. The gimmicks on TV. We send you a handkerchief. It's anointed. We pray over it. I buy my own one and pray over it. And I work just as good as yours. Because I got the Holy Spirit too, baby. And whatever I touch, Holy Spirit is touching. And it's going to be just as anointed as yours. It might be my anointed in yours. We buy into this notion that we, we're going to depend on others when you have the Holy Spirit. One thing the scriptures that say that is off the hook, that God said, I am no respecter of person. You ask and he'll give it to you. You ask and he'll give it to you. He'll, he'll, he'll make a great deposit into your life. We, 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 get, we get sidetracked about, oh, I need to go see a prophet. I don't need to see a prophet. I, I got respect for, for the five-fold ministry, much respect for the five-fold ministry. But I need to open my Bible, and I need to read the word. I need to speak to the Holy Spirit. There ain't no, there ain't no prophet like the Holy Spirit, baby. I need to speak straight to him. Now, if I want a confirmation about something, then I said, Lord, you bring someone that can confirm what you said. And not even that, God will confirm it anyway. I mean, you could be like Gillen, worth the flow, worth the mat, worth the flow, worth the mat. You can go all that stuff all night long if you want. Well, when God speaks, you don't need no confirmation. That's why we, we, I was telling people yesterday, you need, to, you need to rearrange your prayer closet. You need to change the furniture in your prayer closet. Because in your prayer closet, you sit there and you're the one that's talking, but you don't hear God talk to you. In your prayer closet, you don't say, speak, Lord, you're the one speaking. And how you going to hear him? How you going to let him know that he's deposited something? How you know that you walk out the prayer closet with, with a guarantee that he spoke to you in the direction you should go? But because you were talking too much, you don't let him speak. That's why a lot of times in the saints of old, they were like, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Because when heaven speaks, transformation happens. When heaven speaks, everything is canceled. Devils flee. God will, God will put your enemies on flight. When he speaks. Every, the earth and heaven will shake when he speaks. We, we, we so used to, we used to bring in the whole Costco list of things to him. No, man, put that on hold. Sit there. I'd rather hold on to the Costco list and say, hold on to this. Lord, if you just give me one word. If you give me one word, I'll put this away because I don't need it. I just need one word from you, Lord. One word from you. That's all I need. You with me? One word, Lord. One word. One, just give me one word. See, we, we, we believe him. We believe him. We believe him when we should for salvation and forgiveness of sins. We believe him for being mere miracle worker. We believe him. We trust him, you know, that one day he'll bring us to glory. And that's going to happen. We trust him for that. We trust him for that. But when the sudden storm hit. We fail. We go into a spiritual panic. We trust him from all these things, but when the storm hits, we fall apart. We take our eyes off him and we put the eyes on the storm. That's the greatest trick the devil ever pulled on Christians, man. See, when the storm hit, I look at the storm, but I don't focus on it because my focus is in him. And then my focus is in him. I say, be peace, be still, storm, you got to go. You see what I'm saying? We lose the focus and we put our eyes on the storm and we glaze in the storm. It's like Christian, I had a dream and I was... Python spirit was chasing me, and I got so tired of running in the dream. And then I stopped in Starbucks, and they got me a latte. And then, and then I took off again, and I was just running and running and running. And then I, and then I stopped by Chick Fil A, and I, and I get all kind of dreams. I get dreams. That I'm back in the witch's house. I see the people I used to hang out with. And I show up in their dreams. And they're like, hey, hey, John, how you doing? I'm glad you came to the party. I said, I, well, no one invited me. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up here. But anyway, now that I'm here, let me tell you about the gospel. 
And they're like, no, no, we would like to do a ceremony. We would like to do a cleansing for you. I said, well, you can't do that because I'm a Christian now. And because I'm a Christian now, I'm going to share the gospel with you. And in the dream, you could see them being frustrated and angry because they can't put no chicken on me. Or they can't put eggs on me. No, they can't take, they can't take luckily and smack me all over, the, all over the place with it. God, the cleansing and cigar smoke. They can't do that to me in the dream. So they get upset and then the dream is over. Because the devil figure, the devil knows one thing. If he can't get you when you're up, he's going to try and get you when you're asleep. And the only time the devil is chasing the people that are Christian that are asleep in your dream is because the Christian that are up, they have a true, true, true prayer life with the Lord. They have a true prayer life. With the Lord. So the devil knows. Well, I can't get him when he's up. Because this brother has a real consistent prayer life. He got a real consistent relationship with the Lord. So I need to get and Let him go to sleep. Then we'll go get him. Yeah. And even when you're sleeping. You're still in spiritual warfare mode. Yeah. You with me? You're still in spiritual warfare mode. It is good to have a relationship with Jesus. Man, I tell you. Let me tell you one story. I was, I was driving, I was driving cheesecakes. I had a cheesecake duty, part-time cheesecake duty. I was driving cheesecake. My hand, it was right. I mean, it was crazy. It was during Christmas time years ago. During, and, and Christmas time in, in Manhattan, it's just, man, it's like red zone. Traffic all over. You got all these crazy tourists coming. I don't know why they come to New York. <laughs> they come to New York and they want to see the tree. They want to, hey, first of all, I mean, you got to be an idiot to stand out there to watch the ball drop. <laughs> I mean, you just got to be a tourist. To do something that's stupid. <laughs> all the New Yorkers leave. Because first of all, when, when the bo let me give you the story about the whole ball drop. First of all, you got to wear a pamper. You have to wear a pamper. Because they, sit, they, they get you in there early. And you, if you get out to use the bathroom, you can't come back in. So you have to poop on yourself and pee on yourself to watch a ball drop. Only someone from Europe would do something like that. New Yorkers, we ain't wearing no pamper, and we ain't gonna poop on ourselves and pee on ourselves to watch 10, 9, 8. <laughs> and I'm smelling not too good because something is back there. <laughs> Happy New Year! And I'm driving cheesecakes. And I'm having beef on Facebook with the witches that I used to be down with. Why are you talking about my mother? Why are you saying my mom's a witch? I said, well, she's not a doctor. And she's sure not a lawyer. So I'm calling her by her title. Well, my mom won't talk to you. Give, her, give them your number. I said, well, I'm not afraid of you. Here's my number. Tell your mommy to call me. You're afraid of a ghost? I said, call me. I'm driving cheesecake. I got 32 cheesecake in the back. I'm in Russia. I'm going down. I'm going down Rockefeller Center. Down Rockefeller Center. Passing the tree. Cheesecake in the back. And I got Rain Man with me. This guy. That he, he's like my assistant. This guy is like. He's like Rain Man. I mean he. Uh, he knows every address in New York City. Computerized. In his mind. Every address. And then I got Dr. Michael Brown. Listen Dr. Michael Brown. I got cheesecake dude. They got Rain Man next to me. And the witch call. You got to be ready in season, <laughs> not in season. The witch calls. The witch tell me, hey, I got something to tell you. I said, well, tell me now because I got 32 cheesecake back here. I got Rain Man and I'm coming down. To, well, I'm going to tell you, why are you calling me a witch? Why are you, why are you making fun of us? Because you made money when you was with us. I said, I used to be with you, but I'm not with you anymore. So I don't, I don't have to be in that situation. I said, are you a doctor? She said, no. I said, are you a lawyer? No. I said, are you a witch? So that's your title. I'm calling you. But I watch all your Facebook stuff and I watch all your, your, your YouTube. And you, 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 you discredit us and you tell us we witches and we this and we that. And you, and you try to expose the covenants that we are and you try to expose the secrets and all that. You better stop. I said, you gave me a reason now to keep going. Then she's like, <coughs> <coughs> on the phone. I say, I say, what's wrong with you? And she said, it's my cigarette. I said, no, you're not. You're manifesting. She said, no, I'm not. I said, yes, you are. 
Matt, and the rain man saying, hey, you got to make a right turn. <laughs> you have to make a right turn. Yeah, we're going to miss the stop. I'm driving. I'm cruising. 32 flavors in the back. Cruising the witch on the phone from Miami. Telling me off. And I'm rain man trying to make a right. You got to be anointed for this kind of stuff. You got to be anointed. You got to be Holy Spirit 24-7. And the witch is trying to intimidate me over the phone, trying to transfer spirit over the phone. Trying to transfer spirit over the phone. The witch got so upset, she was manifesting. She said, it's my cigarette. I got to go. She hung up. I mean, one time I was walking down, I had a cheesecake in my hand. And, and, and I, you know, I'm not embarrassed. You know, job is a job. Man, I'm not stealing. I'm not selling drugs. I had a cheesecake in my hand. I'm walking down 57th Street. I'm crossing 57th Street and Fifth Avenue and Tiffany's. I'm dropping a cheesecake off to Tiffany. And the cheesecake lady said, she said, we got two rules in this joint. She said, we got two rules in this joint. I said, what is it? She said, if you drop a cheesecake, you pay for it. That's $32. The cheesecake, $32, right? Well, wholesale is $32, $42, retail. So, I mean, I'm like, she's paying me $280. I can't afford to drop a cake. <laughs> I need the money. Right? And she said, if you get a ticket, we deduct out of your paycheck. That's $65. Now, I got $280 paycheck, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I can't drop a cake because, you know, take 32 out of, out of 280, I'm coming home short. I can't drop it. And I was broke. I ain't going to lie. I was broke. So I'm turning around. I, I'm crossing the street. Guess what's coming across the street? A warlock. I'm like, oh, no, man. This is, this, this is not a good day. <laughs> He's coming across the street. This guy was so demonic. I used to be with him in, in the witchcraft for all. We were, we, were, we were on that level, almost third high rank that were worshipers. This guy was a monster of a warlock, witch doctor. He was, he was, a, he was a black American. Don't say Afro-American. You don't live in Africa. It's Afro-American stuff. You, you're black American. Come on. I'm, I'm New Yorican. <laughs> I don't Puerto Rican. I'm New Yorican. No Puerto Rican. Huh? I'm New Yorican. I grew up in New York. I'm New Yorican. I've been to Puerto Rico once. It sucks. <laughs> you pray for me. <laughs> I'm New Yorican. Every Afro-American. You're afro No, you're not. Anyway, I just had a, had a moment there. So this guy, black American, he coming across. This guy was so demonic when he get demon possessed. He speak a perfect Spanish. When he got out of the demonic, when the demon left him, he speak no Spanish at all. So now this guy is coming across, right? And I'm like, oh, I got to deal with this guy. I got the cheesecake here. I got to drop the cake off. I'm going to be late. He come across. He, he confront me like face on, face on. He said, what's going on, John? I already know what that means. I mean, the witchcraft fraud. He's sizing me up. He's sizing up the authority. He's sizing up how he can get into the spirit round and jack me up. I know the trick. I've been there, done that. I got the t-shirt. So he turned, he stretched his hand out. So I said, okay, I stretched my hand out, grabbed his hand because he was giving me a handshake. But the handshake is not a handshake. Handshake is to transfer something in you because they got ceremonies done in the hand. They got ceremonies done in their hand to transfer spirits on you. That's why the Bible says, don't be quick of laying of the hands. So he, had, he has a ceremony in his hands because I know the ceremony. I had the same one too. So he can transfer a demon to you. And so I grabbed his hand. As soon as I grabbed his hand, all Fifth Avenue went on a, uh, all Fifth Avenue went on a slow motion. Slow motion. He had, he had, a, he had a demonic grip on me. The fifth family went in a slow motion. And I'm like looking at, like everything went black and white, right? Because he had me by the hand. I mean, he was trying to try for something, but there was something blocking him, right? So I'm holding the cake and I'm like thinking about if I drop the cake, <laughs> if I drop the cake, that's 32, that's $32. I got to get my hands off this devil in front of me. He has a grip. And this guy's strong. He had a grip. I said, well, if I drop the cake, to get my hands off, I owe the cheesecake, cheesecake lady $32. So I'm not going to drop the cake. So I'm going to hold on to the 32 I deal with this devil in front of me. So as soon as I went like that, pulled off hard. When I pulled off hard, he started to shake. 
right? And his eyes went back. Right on Fifth Avenue, it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He started to shake. I thought he had Parkinson's. I said, this guy got Parkinson's. And the Lord was showing me. Holy Spirit hit him so hard. The Holy Spirit hit him so hard that he was shocked. He was shaking because he couldn't believe. He went into a trauma. How, got, how hard he got hit by the Holy Spirit. I mean, he, was, he rocked back. He couldn't believe the power that came out of my hand. He, he, was, he was asking himself, what do he have that I don't have that hit me so hard, that shook me, that his eyes rolled back when all you saw was the white of his eyes. And I looked at him. I said, you okay? <laughs> I still had the cake. I said, I'll talk to you later, right? He said, yeah. He's like, yeah, you talk to me later. Yeah, you talk to me later. I walked across. I dropped that cake. Come stiff. I dropped that cake in one piece at Tiffany's. God is good. Because you see, I know the God in the battle. I know the God in the storm. I know the God, the miracle worker. I know the one that walks on water. I know the one that holds today. He holds today. He holds tomorrow. And he holds in the pen of my story. See, see, we know the now, but God knows what's, we know what's in front of you, but God knows what's ahead of you. And that devil... And that devil, he was a nasty devil. He would take dogs from the SPCA and he would adopt them so he could kill them in the train tracks for the blood. That's how crazy this guy was. That's how demonic this guy was. See, when we take the eyes off of Jesus, he is the God of the storm. We don't see, we, we, we don't see Jesus Anywhere near the storm because your eyes been off you. Your eyes are too busy on the circumstance. Your eyes are too busy running from here, from running here, hoping you get an answer from somewhere. Your eyes been everywhere else but on him. Your eyes been everywhere else but on, not on him. Not on him. You rather, tr you ra you rather believe the devil than trust God. Because you, you like, the first thing that come out of your mouth, why is this happening, Lord? Why is this happening to me? Where am I going to this, Lord? And he's giving you the pop quiz. He's giving you the pop quiz. He, Job didn't get no text. Job didn't get no memo. Job didn't get no DM. He didn't get no FedEx envelope. When the storm came looking for him. I mean, Joe got memos. Your family died. Your livestock died. Your wife despised you. Joe got memos saying, now your name is worth nothing. Because at one time your name was up there and now it's worth nothing. He got all these memos. But he knew. See, Joe had to learn something. Sometimes we miss it because we get too comfortable. God is not like you. God is not like you. So you got to ask yourself, it's not if God is on your side. It's whether you're on his side. And God is not like you. He's not a man. He's like you. And we think God is like us. And he's not like us. The psalm speaks about his majesty, he's not like us. And we come into this conclusion, we come into this mindset that instead of praying and seeking, we start questioning him. Why am I going to this? Why this is going on? And why is that going on? And why this is happening? And why this is going? You need to put your eyes back on him and get your eyes off the circumstance so you don't have to say, why, why, why? And all you have to say, bring it on, devil. Bring it on. Because I'm ready. I'm, 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 I'm better than Freddy. Because I'm ready. <laughs> Bring it on, devil. Because if you couldn't kill me when I was in the world, you can't kill me now that I'm in Jesus. <laughs> Think about it, right? Think about it, right? You'd rather partner with the devil's lies 
how, how, this is the thing. See, we, we, sometimes we downplay the Israelites, right? Well, they saw the 10, they saw the 10 plagues and they're still tripping. And they saw this and the Red Sea opened and they're still tripping. But you're tripping too, Jack. Because God brought you out of 20 years of craziness. And the crazy stuff shows up and you quite, still question them just like the Israelites are. At least I can, at least I had compassion for the Israelites because it's hard to, you know, to, to come out of something out of 400 years of bondage. You live in the project for 20 years and you think the project is your world. But outside of the project, they're better neighborhoods. They got white people. <laughs> outside of the projects. In the project, we got blacks, Puerto Ricans, and Dominicans. And you come out, you go to Fifth Avenue, you see, oh, wow, look. Look, nice stores. I can't afford it, <laughs> but they're nice stores. And you say, you, say, you have to, you have to, you have to truly expand your vision beyond your DNA, beyond where you were born in, who you were born to. Expand. Your vision, because God is writing your story. There's people sitting here that one day you're going to be entrepreneurs, but you're missing it. One day you're going to write books, but you're missing it. One day God's going to do great things to you, but you're missing it because you're sizing yourself by the DNA that you were born into. And the devil got you trapped. My, my brother here, pastor, was out in Argentina hanging out with Carlos on the corner, one of the most, most, I think to me, one of the greatest, one of the greatest deliverance people in the planet. Because I've seen videos of him. I don't know him personally, but I've seen videos. He'll show up to the stadium and he's not even preaching. People manifest. And people will manifest. Give me that anointing. Show up. I show up in uh, Walmart. Okay. <laughs> Costco's. People manifest. I can just skip the line. People manifest. I hate Costco's. You look at Costco's and it's like you go to hell. I went to hell. A lot of people there. A lot of people in Costco's. Pack. So is hell. You with me? So, 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 li listen, I'm almost done. Check this out. The sad thing is the God of the storm is walking with you. He's teaching you how to walk on water. Because God is a supernatural God. And the thing that you should be walking on is drowning you. The thing that you should be walking on, you're drowning in it. But you're not, pass you're not passing the pop quiz. The thing, the thing that you should be walking on, because God is a supernatural God. God is walking with you. He, he promised you he'll never leave you, forsake you. He'll be with you to the end of time. Just because the teacher is quiet and silent doesn't mean that he, he knows, God knows right where you are. He has you right where he wants you to be. But you give the devil too much props. And you give your circumstances too much attention. And you minimize the God that you serve. And that's the devil's trick for all believers in your mind. The battlefield is in your mind. If you can't beat the devil here, you can't beat him out in the battlefield. Because the fight starts here, baby. The fight starts here. It's crazy. Check this out. God, you see IBM, IBM. They made the first hard drive, whatever. Get out of here. God made the first hard drive. God made the first hard drive. Oh, we invented a submarine. No, you're not stupid. Jonah did. <laughs> Jonah was in a submarine for three days. <laughs> we just came out with anesthesia. No, you're not stupid. Ask Adam. God put him in a deep sleep. That's anesthesia, baby. It's all in the Bible. It's all there. We get doctors. I mean, no wrong doctors. You get doctor too much props. Well, he, he invented this. Read your word. I guarantee you, it's there. I guarantee you, it's there. So my last, my last thing is trusting. Listen, you need to trust God because he's testing your faith. 
He's, how's your faith? Because the bottom line is, God says in one of the last statements he made, he said, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? Right. He's testing your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, you won't have no currency in heaven. He's testing your faith. God is testing your faith. How is your, the, he's testing your faith. How's your faith? Jesus is asking you, simply, he's asking you, what want you to trust him in the time of your storm, in your blackest and demonic, despicable, crazy, darkest hour of your time? Did you still see him front and center? No matter what black circumstance, it could be black and dark in your life. They can tell you got three months to live. Do you still see Jesus? They can tell you any report in your life. Do you still see him in your darkest hour? Did you see him? The, the, the disciples failed the test. When they saw him coming, they say he's a ghost. Because in the darkest hour, he was walking on water to come get you, and you missed it. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like the beloved John, right? The beloved John was sitting, he was, he was mellowing out. He was all that in a bag of chips laying on Jesus' chest. But when it came to the book of Revelation, he didn't recognize him. In the book of Revelation, Jesus came in a whole different way. He felt like a dead man. He didn't even recognize him. Have Jesus come into your life in ways that you don't recognize him? Because God is like a diamond. He come in different facets. And we wait for him in one way because we think he's going to do this. Way. That's why people die. Christians die. Christians, they go like, where am I going? I'm not going. First of all, you got to be a retard. This Christianity, this retard Christianity. I got a lump on my chest. I'm going to call in faith. I'm just going to lay my hands here. I'm just going to pray, 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 pray. No, stupid. Go to the doctor. Go yourself check. If I would have waited and I would say, I'm going to lay my hands over here. I'm just going to pray, pray, pray. I would have been blind forever. Because I need, it's not, the, it's not I didn't have faith. I wanted to know how God was going to do it. I wanted to know how God was going to heal me. Because God had many ways he could heal me. He could snap his fingers, heal me, give me 20-20. Or he can send me to the doctor and say, I'm going to do it this way. But I got faith. I'm going to lay my hands here and wait. And then me may walk around with a dog. Woo-woo. Because <laughs> God can heal you any way he wants. You just got to show up and find out how he's going to do it. Find out how you're going to do it. Stop making things up. I got faith. I'm going to wait here. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wait. And, and your lump is growing bigger. Then when it's too late, well, I think I'm going out to the It's too late. You might go go to the morgue. That's what you're going. And then when you get to heaven, you're going to say, Lord, what happened? Why you didn't heal me? Well, God said, stupid. I was trying to get your attention. Because I go everywhere and then say, Lord, how are you going to do it? It's not, it's not, I'm not, my faith is not in question. It's my wisdom is in question. My faith is not in question. I just got to go do everything down the line and find out what part God's going to show up on. And then I come in agreement with him and get my healing. I come in agreement and get my breakthrough. I come in agreement and get my restoration, restitution, whatever he has for me. I come in agreement with him. I touch and agree with him. But I, I got to go check and see how he's going to do it. And we miss it because right away we just want to, you know, we want to we be religious. I got faith. That's cool, but go get just check. It, it makes sense to you? Yeah. And Christians, sometimes, I know Christians that had cancer, and I got faith. And now you, you're on four stage cancer. Now, I, I think I should go have myself checked. Well, you should have done that six months ago. Let's not be stupid. Don't let the devil play you. Your faith is not in question. Your question is the wisdom that God giving you. How you, how you going to hear God, listen to God, and obey God, and go get yourself checked, or not only get yourself checked, and find out how God's going to do it for you. We like, we like delusional and delivered devils in the church. My altar call is simple. You come and you trust. You come and you believe. 
You come and make right. You come and say, Lord, I'm here. Whatever, 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 whatever was right in my own eyes, I want to erase that. Whatever seemed right in my own mind, I want to get rid of that. I want to have the mind of Christ. I want to have the faith that I need. I want to have the wisdom of heaven in my life. I want to be a balanced Christian. A balanced Christian cannot be moved. The devil might hit you. He might sucker punch you. But you're not moving from the spot that God put you on. You know, like the waves in the sea. You may toss back and forth, toss back and forth. And then you blame, you blame everybody else. But you don't take responsibility for your crazy self. I see peop- I've seen people fight with the Holy Spirit. How crazy is that? I mean, you fight with the Holy Spirit. And then people go into some crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. I was in Texas one time. And, uh, and this young, young, good looking guy. He came up there, 26, 27. Pray for me, John. Screaming out of his lungs. Pray for me. I need help. I need help. Pray for me. I thought like if someone, like mother died, somebody died. This got a trauma devil on him. I said, well, yeah, what's up? I mean, tell me, what's going on? What do you want to pray for you? You know, let's put it on the table. Let's put it on the altar. Don't bring, don't bring, first of all, you're going to come out to the altar. Don't bring Ishmael. Bring Isaac. Don't bring your Ishmaels. God is sick and tired of your Ishmaels. If you're going to come and justify, you're going to come and repent. One or the other. You can't justify and repent at the same time. You either bring Isaac or you leave Ishmael at home. I'll come back next week. This church casts out devils next week too, by the way. Yelling, ah, ah. I said, what's up? What's wrong? And this is what he said to me. He said, I came out of a guy, uh, bath gay house. I was, last night, I was in a gay house, bath gay house. Some, some crazy stuff. I don't know what the heck is that. He said, I was just babying and showering with all, all men. And I smell filthy. Touch me, John. I, said, I ain't touching you. Hey, <laughs> brother. You stay right there and, and just pray from there. Catch it. <laughs> you don't put that devil on me. Catch it. I stay right there, 20 feet, brother. COVID. <laughs> See, you, you, you went and did something. Now you want to justify. You want God to fix it. You baiting with men, and you come to the altar. And God understands struggle, but that's not a struggle. That pig been washed and went back and wallow. It's a difference. Understand? Crazy stuff. One time I was in Japan, and this girl, come, tall Japanese girl, come up to me, ah, crying, crying, screaming. I'm what's wrong with you? I mean, you know, she spoke English. I said, what's wrong with you? She said, oh, I gotta, I gotta say something. I'm, I feel like I'm gonna die. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? Sometimes you can, you know, you got, sometimes you look at people and you think, oh, they're okay. No, no, you got to be careful. In the end, she told me, I said, what's wrong? I said, she said, I need to talk to you in private. She said, well, not in private. I said, just step through this way. The altar's right there. Step right here. Tell me, I just robbed my boss for $20,000. I said, let me show I got my wallet. <laughs> let me show my wallet's with me. This Japanese girl is crazy. What should I do? Give him back the money. What should you do? Give him back the money. She bought all kind of noodles and fortune cookies with that money. (laughs) 20 grand robbed the boss. God understands mistakes. But it's time to make right and to live right and finish right. Stop justifying because in the midst of your justification... You don't know how long your life is. And I'm, 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 not, I'm not here to judge anybody. That's not my job. My job is to get you to the cross and get you right. My job is to get you to the cross so you can make peace with God. Last night we had one of the most amazing altar calls. People were brave enough to come out and say, I want to make right with God. Because you don't know tomorrow. I'd rather, if I got 30 years of my life left, say, I'm 58. If I got 30 years left. I want it to be the best years of my life. Because it's not where I started 25 years of witchcraft. It's where I finish with the Lord. Amen. I want to finish like Billy Graham. I want to finish like David Wilkinson. I want to finish like those saints of old that ran a race and they finished well. 
Amen. This, this, listen, I don't understand how Christians want to backslide and go to the world when the world got the question marks and in Christ we got the answer. I, I don't understand how you're chasing question mark when you already got the answer. Understand? I don't want to go chase question marks of the world anymore. I believe everything that I've been through in my life for 22 years, walking with the Lord, eyesight loss, money loss, bankruptcy, lost house, lost cars, repo, welfare, full stamps, broken, just broken, no ministry, no nothing. People laugh, people mock. I've been through all that. But I know he was always with me because he's the God of the supernatural. <laughs> to all that I've been through, all that I've been through, all that I've been through, all that. Cry. I had to, I had, I had to buy it. My mom bought me, my mom bought me an air mattress. That thing was all jacked up. And it, you fill it up at night in the morning, the air was out of it. You find yourself sleeping. You find yourself sleeping on the floor. My brother used to lend me his TV. And when the Steelers used to play the Dallas Cowboys and beat them down, and he would come back and get the TV off of me. So my mom got tired of him coming back and getting the TV because his team lost. And my mom bought me a TV. So I had, a, I had this TV. Remember the TV with the back end? That thing is so heavy. <laughs> the back of the TV. You need like five people to carry that bad boy. <laughs> now the TV is so, the TV is so thin right now, you, you, you can get a toddler to carry the TV. All right? And the remote control was the pair of pliers. <laughs> and, and the reception was the aluminum. The, <laughs> and the hanger. And you tell your brother, stay there, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Those are the good old days. Right? I tell you right now, if young, young people would have grew up in my time and our time, y'all would have, it would have, the suicide rate would have been off the hook. It would have been 90% suicide rate. iPhone, stick your finger. Vroom, vroom, vroom. That was the iPhone in the house, baby. With the long wire. My mom was a rodeo. My mom would be on the phone. <laughs> My brother's back. His skin will come off. I'm preaching it, right? Come on now. Come on now. Then we got fancy. We got the push button joints. Oh, and I graduated. Then the color TV, the color TV came out. And then if you got, and if you was a drug dealer, you had the TV that just came out the wooden thing. I'm just saying that to tell you, look how far God has brought you. Look how far he has brought you. To it all. To the pains and the suffering and the full stems and the people that left you down, the family that turned their back on you, and people that discredit you, and people that lie about you, and people that cheated about you, and people that turned their backs on you, and people that did you wrong, you're still here. Because he's not done with you yet. They thought they buried you, but they're just planting you because God is rising you up. And like my brother was saying, we're going into some things. Man, three things you need in your life. A real church, a real dentist, and a real lawyer. <laughs> Just to let you know. My wife got the best teeth in the world. She, she did 25 years of, what do you call that thing you did, hygienist? You bleach yourself 24-7, right? <laughs> look at her teeth, look. When you die, someone's going to come get those, believe that. <laughs> they're, worth a lot of, <laughs> they're worth a lot of money. <laughs> oh my God. We go eat, two minutes later, she's flossing. I'm like, can't you wait till you get home? Floss. She floss more than anybody on the planet. Listen, there's no flossing in heaven. Don't worry about it. No one dies. We don't have to say goodbye. No one dies in heaven. We don't cry because we're all good in the hood in heaven. Some, some are going to have mansions in heaven and some are going to live in the projects. Because you're going to go up there with incomplete. Because what God told you to finish, you never finished. That's what the Bible said. You make, you're going to make heaven by the skin of your teeth. Because everything God gave you, you had it incomplete. You never completed it. And everything God told you to do, you didn't do. You did it your way. You had the source spirit. The source spirit is, was, was sought with the kind of church that he looked good in the outside, but filthy in the inside. 
And David looked like the, David was a church that looked filthy on the outside, but he was right in the inside. So my altar call is simple. You come. How many people here truly, truly can say, and this is a serious moment, truly can say, if I were to die tonight, I'll make heaven. How many people here believe in their heart that if you were to die today, you won't make heaven? No, raise your hand. I'm being very serious. And I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you why. How many people here, if you die tonight, you won't make heaven? Raise your hand. I got one brave person in the back. I'm going to tell, tell you why you're not making heaven. I'm going to tell you why you're not making heaven. I'm, I'm, I hear God speaking to me right now. I have Holy Spirit speaking. I'm going to tell you why you're not making heaven. You're a lukewarm Christian. A lukewarm Christian don't make heaven. God will spit you back out. Read the book of Revelation. He's going to spit you back out. You worry about the world. You worry about circumstance. You worry about situation. You don't have God first in your life. You don't have a prayer life. You don't have a commitment. You don't have a lifestyle. You have, you have TV. You have I want a monster in your house first. You got your social media second. You got everything else third. And God is nowhere to be found on your list. Your five to-do list. What are they? Your five to-do list. Where is God in your five to-do list? Where is he in your five to-do list? Now I'm going to ask you the question again after I told you that. If you're going to be real, if you were to die tonight, you won't make heaven. Raise your hand. Okay. So that means you don't come up for prayer. You're going to make heaven. You don't need prayer. My brother back there, you need prayer, right? Come up. The rest of you could take your demons home. You're compromising demons. You could take it home because you're lying to the Holy Spirit. If God were to put your life on that screen, I guarantee you run out the church. Some of you got a gossip spirit. And you call it, I'm just telling you something so you can pray for them. No, you're not. You're a gossiper. I don't, people tell me something, I don't tell nobody. I will have to go to the person and say, hey, could you give me permission to tell this person? Could you release me? That's the God way to doing it. Not, a, I'm an intercessor. No, you're not. You're a liar. One person raised their hand back there. Come up to the front, please. Come up to the front. That's right. Amen. Come up to the front. Amen. Come up to the front. There you go. We got some brave people coming up because they want to make heaven. I'm, I'm, listen, I get off the hook altar calls. I'm not worried about the altar call. I'm worried about yourself. My job is worrying about you. I'm not worried about filling up the altar call. I guarantee you now when I say you got devils come up, and then when you tell me you got devils come up, that means that with the, one of the reasons you got devils because you got open doors. And if you got open doors, that means that you're playing, you playing patty cake with the devil. So now you're telling me you're still making heaven. Think about it. Think about it. This season that we get tested, this season trials come. I get those seasons because it's part of your purpose, your destiny, right? But I know seasons that you have in your life that you had compromised and you got open doors. And now the devil is tormenting you and you saying, still you making heaven. When you've been sleeping with the enemy. Pornography is in the house. Pornography is in the house. And you're still sitting here. You're sitting here and thinking you're going to heaven. I, listen, Wilkerson used to preach, and people either run to the car or they run, or they run to the altar. We don't have that preaching anymore. I'd rather be mad at me, but when you get to Hallelujah Boulevard, you come check me out. I'd rather you be saying, you know, John, I'm glad you preached that message. You know what I mean? There was a guy that was dying, and before he was dying, he told the pastor, I, don't want, I hate you. I, I never go to your church. And when he was dying, the first, you know who the person he called? He called that pastor. Come pray for me. And he told the pastor, don't ever, ever stop preaching what you're preaching. Because in Christ, it's about walking with him and being right with him. Not perfect, because we know no one is just perfect. I'm the first one to raise my hand. I'm, not per I'm far from perfect, but I want to be genuine. I want to be genuine. I, I got my struggles. I remember one time I was driving, and I wanted to make a right turn in New York City on Canal Street. And they had those traffic people. And they, they didn't want to make, make the right turn. So I give her the finger. And I say, here, for your mama. 
And Holy Spirit convicted me. I had to go around, all the way around, 50 minutes to come back and say sorry. Right? And, I, and then what, what, what could have, I could have kept going, but I had, to make, I had to take 50 minutes extra to come back and apologize to the lady. See? Because I wanted to make right. Yes, I make mistake. Make right. Make right with God. Make peace with God. Make peace with God. Amen? Amen. So y'all came. You got any demons? Anybody got demons? Raise their hand. You got demons? Come on over here. You got demons. You come over here. And no, I'm not embarrassed. I got demons too. I mean, if you got demons, come up. Now you're going to tell me how your demons are look. How, why your demons? Why you got demons? You can come on this side. You tell me why you got demons. You got demons because you're being tested. You got demons because you're compromising. You've been saved how many times? You save already. You don't have to be on this line. But if you want prayer, you go on that line. And I'm not saying that because I know you. I know you love Jesus. I know you're safe. Amen? Oh, you got demons? Oh, what kind of demons you got? All kinds? Little ones, big ones, old ones, young ones? All right. At least your honesty. I, I honor your honesty. Amen? I want your life to count whatever, whatever years you got left. I want it to be the best years of your life. Yes, there are going to be struggles. Yes, there are going to be challenges. But the struggles and the challenges are going to be victories for you and I. Because we serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God that he went to the foster care of the world to get you. We are foster kids adopted by an awesome God. That he signed the adoption papers with the blood of his son to get you and me. How awesome is that? That's why I'm, I'm blown away to even know that he loves me that much. You can come this way. I, I go to 